All right, let's move on to assignment 2B. So this is my original drawing. I just wiped all that stuff out. And what I want to do is come down here, double click the text, change this to 2B, and hit OK. And there I've got 2B now. So let's start 2B. Now uh, 2B, I'm not going to go all the way through it. All I want to do is just explain a couple of things on how you're supposed to build the thing up and find the area. That's what we're trying to do in this, right? In the perimeter. And I'll show everybody kind of how to do that. Um, what I wanted everybody to, to practice on was that you can draw lines in many different ways. The first way would be an absolute, which is in parentheses. I believe I showed that to you guys right there. You can see it. It's got um, everything in the parentheses means that's an absolute number that comes from this X and Y zero. Do you see that? That's the zero point of the drawing, and that one by one, one comma one, comes from x one y one. So it'd be one and one over, and that's how we're going to draw that. I'm not going to draw it on my screen, but that's all you have to do is type in one comma one. I'll, and tell you what, I'll just do that right now. So line one comma one, enter. And if you notice, the starting point of that line. It is starting it one from this origin. It's starting it right there. Now it's in a straight mode, and I believe my drawing requires what? It requires a straight line. Well, if you notice, what's the next position? One comma one. If it's a straight line, that means y is not changing, right? It's not going up and down, it's just going straight across. The only thing changing is x. Now this is an absolute number from the original zero. So what would I do? Subtract these two x's and I should get the distance of this line. That will be 4.1 minus 1, it will be 3.1. So let's go over here and it's waiting for me to input a number. Notice I can just move my mouse in the direction I want to go in. Type 3.1 and I've got my first line that I need to draw. Alright, then the next thing I got out of that is what? It's the after I've got that, then it's got a little line going up this direction, but I, I really don't care about that. I care about going to this point right here. I can actually, that's an absolute value, right? So I can actually start a line from those numbers, and it should start right in that space from the zero, right? So let's do that. Line, enter, that's going to be 4.5, I believe it was, comma, 2.2. .2. I hit enter. And there is a start point of that line. And what was the distance of that line? Because it kind of showed me what the distance of the line was, was 2.3 from this over. So I've already got the distance right, right here, right? It's waiting for me to put it in. So 2.3, going over to the right. So there we go. I've got the two lines that make up my thing. Now, what about that line that was at an angle? Right, that's this one here. Well, how easy is that? All I do is draw a line, oops, L, right click, and just go from end point to end point. Done. There we go. Now the next one, let's take a look and see what do we got to do. It went straight, now it's going to go at an angle, right? And if everybody remembers, AutoCAD reads all angles from 0 is 3 o'clock position. And that's the 0. So that means if you think about that 0 and you have 150 from here, that is 180, right? Going all the way over. So 150 minus 180, What's that little angle that's from zero? It's going to be 30 degrees, right? So what I want to do is, this is another way we can actually draw a line. We're going to do a line, enter, and we're going to start from this point. And now, notice, do I need ortho? No, it's going at an angle. So let's turn ortho, orthographics off, which is ortho mode, which is F8. So I turned it off. Now I can go up to some angle just so I can feel it or see it or just pull my mouse close to it. But now I can actually enter a length and an angle so that it puts it right in there for me. So to, to activate that type of command, which is called polar uh, linear um, linear application or however you want to say it, line creation, it's the polar version. So this is the polar method. So all you have to do is do an at, that's shift and two on a keyboard, at, and then it asks you for a length of the line. Well, let's go back to that drawing here. What was the length of that line? It was 1.4. Do you see it? So I'm going to come back here, and it's waiting for me to put 1.4. So I did, but now when I want to go to the angle, if you notice, 
in that little box right next to my mouse right here, there's a little less than sign. So right away, when I've got the distance I want, I go right to the less than sign. And when I put the less, less than sign, it takes automatically, automatically takes me to the next little box, and it's asking me for an angle. And what angle was that? It was 30 degrees. All I do is put 30, hit enter, and guess what? We've got our piece that we were drawing. And that was going to be that little line right there. Okay, so everything looks matches up, looks good. And then when you want to draw the line up there, it's just a straight line up going with the 2.1. And we come over here, figure out that angle. Again, that's 30 degrees from here. But remember, this is zero, so it'll be 90 plus 30, which is 120 for that angle. And then again, straight and another straight. And then if you look here, it's 45. Well, it's 180 minus 45, because remember, you got to start at 3 o'clock. You come around, and you minus 45, and there you go. So what would that be? 90 plus 45, 135 would be that angle. Then you go over here, one and so forth and so on, all the way around until you finish your part. So what I'm going to do, I'll let you guys play around with that, but what I'm going to go is further on, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to draw some lines here just to make it look kind of like it's the one that I'm drawing there. It's not exactly. I'm just doing some different stuff here. I just want to come over here and I'm going to leave a couple of lines out. Okay, so let's just pretend like that's your piece and I'll let you guys draw the right size and right stuff. What I need to do now is, what are the instructions? The instructions say right here is that it should be draw the shape, which we're doing. You do not have to place the dimensions. They are optional. You do not need the dimensions. They're only there for you to draw this. It should look like this over here. And then find the area inside the odd shape. So what I need to do is find the area and then find the perimeter. So let's find the area. So how are we going to find area? Well, it's a, pr it's a pretty easy thing to do. It's area, but the area, the way AutoCAD works is it's not as smart as like a 3D modeling software. So you have to actually tell, you have to basically make all these single lines into one particular object, all connected. So how do we do that? We want to use what they call, when you're trying to find information about stuff, AutoCAD calls it a region. So we need to create a region. So let's type in R-E-G-I-O-N. We enter it, and now it asks me to select objects for the region. Well, I kind of know I'm, I, that I want all of this, so I'm just going to put a window. Left to right puts a window around everything, which is a blue window. That means anything inside the window gets selected. And I say, okay, right click. And guess what? Now when I put my mouse over it, oh, look, the whole thing highlights. And what is it labeled as or tagged as? It's tagged as a region. So now AutoCAD sees that as a region that is... Uh, capable of providing information like perimeters, areas, things like that. So let's move on to the next step, which is going to be the word area, the command area. We hit enter. Now, area has a lot of subcommands as well. Just like a circle, it has, it has some other things here. So first of all, since I don't have anything here that I've, I'm taking out, I'm just doing one body, one piece. All I want is that is a single object. That whole piece is now a single object. So I'm going to do is click on object or type in O whichever one you want to do now it asks me to select the object well when I put my mouse over this I select the object and right over here in the blue there you go if you notice I get my total area and guess what I get at the end there also the perimeter so if I've got those I'm good to go and I escape out of here and I'm done oh but you know what I needed to see what that was again so what does the F2 command does uh, what does it do for you it brings up all the history of all the commands you ever did on this drawing. So I'm going to do an F2. And it's the command line of all history of all the drawings. And guess what? There's my area. And all I do is copy this right here. Control C right off of a, just like Windows. And I'm going to go to M text. And I'm going to put a little box out here. And I'm going to put Control V. And there's my area. I hit OK. So guess what? I can read that clearly. I know that's your area. And also there was a perimeter, right? So F2. What was that? Perimeter right there. Just highlight it. Copy. Close this. Double click this so I can add it to this. And Control V and hit OK. And guess what? I've got my area my perimeter. All I want to do is see it on the drawing just like that. This is what I want to see. All right. Hope that helps.